Okay, so let's look into this aesthetically. I think it looks nice having, we'll have this stick out here, what, six inches? And I'll, I'll, so I'll do it, so we'll say six and a half, a little bit of room to clean that up. Right there on the short end. And yeah, that'll go straight. So I think we can, I think we can lay out our mortise now. So I've got the mortise all laid out and you can see here that I took a, uh, I took a back saw and I just carefully cut down in there all the way around on that shoulder. So I have a nice clean shoulder. The back saw has finer teeth on it and it doesn't, it's not quite so uh, gnarly as the, uh, as the bigger saws. So you can see here that I've got this line right here. So we need a six inch tenon. And this was actually six and three quarters. So there's three eighths that's gonna come off on both sides here. And what that's gonna give us is gonna give us, um, I forget all the terminology, but I think it's a, a housed tenon. No, it's not housed, haunched. Ah, I can't remember. Anyway, it's gonna have a shoulder on it that's gonna butt up there. So when you look at it, it'll look like uh, the wood just comes together. And the only way you can tell that, that it's mortised would be from the, of course, sticking out the other side, mortise tenon and the, and the dowling there, it, but it's a, it's, a, it's a good way to do it. And it, it's kind of mandatory for this, or I have to take all this material down. And so this, there's just more than one way to skin a cat on all this stuff. And then here on the other side, you can see this is, will be the thickness. This is the two inch. So that's gonna go right there in, inside that uh, mortise that we chopped right there. So how do we go about cutting this? There's lots of ways we can do it. I'm gonna show you how you can do it with a handsaw and then I'm gonna do it with a skill saw just to save time and speed things up a little bit. So the principle's the same regardless of how you do it, whether you take your hand saw, but what works really good is, I mean, you don't wanna chisel all that down by hand. I mean, it, I guess it could be done, but it would take, a, take an age, is to take your saw and have, you've got your marks there, right? Remember, we're gonna cut, with two inches, we're gonna cut, we're gonna take the mark away. We're gonna cut down to the mark and then a little bit beyond. That way we're just a little bit smaller because we kept the mark on our mortise. You can kind of, just kind of think about that. And you're gonna cut strips like this every inch or so, here, 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 right down to the line on both sides, not beyond, just right down to the line. And then you take a chisel and knock those off. Doing a, a tenon like this is really quickly. So if you don't wanna uh, do the handsaw method, a skill saw makes very short work of it. And so what I'll do is now this, of course, is a very uneven timber. It's thicker here than here. So if we set the depth of the saw and we cut, 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 run over there, we're gonna to be too deep over here and our tenon's not gonna fit properly. It's just, that's, that's something, you know, that's the problem with power tools. When you're working with hand tools, you can take your time and, and, and keep an eye on things. Power tools, they make mistakes so quickly. So just, you gotta, we gotta know that. So we're gonna to have to stop intermittently and change the depth of our saw. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go to maximum depth there to the line, I'm gonna stay just above it. And that way, and then we'll use the slick and we'll, and we'll pare down to our desired thickness right there, so. There, you can kind of see what I'm talking about now, right there. So with this same depth, see we're, we're getting deeper, deeper, deeper there. Now's the time we can reset our saw. So take a little time with this stuff. If you cut your own timbers like I do, you're gonna, you're gonna run into this type of thing. So just uh, don't be surprised. So what we'll do is we'll change the depth of that just a little bit. And there's also no reason why we can't take, all right, well, we got our saw out and cut this, the top of it as well. Make sure though, we're only gonna cut do this from one side unless we know that our timbers are absolutely square. I know this one is not square. If we cut from both sides, they'll never come together and we'll ruin it. So we'll just cut one side on our control side, our flat side, and then we'll pare it down to it uh, with the hand tools. So 
So this is always one of my favorite parts because you move, you get to remove so much wood so quickly. It's a great method cutting down to your line like that. It just makes uh, getting rid of the waste wood so quick. So we'll, we know that we can just go right down to our cuts. Keeping our chisel oriented like this here so we can, if we keep our chisel like this, we can control how it, the depth. If we run it this way, you can't control anything and it'll dive and mess up your work. But this is the way you want to do it here. So when you finally get tired of chasing your work, your work around, like I just did, uh, something I used to do, I forgot, I forgot this, but I remember now, I uh, put it up against an immovable post or wall or something. That way you're transferring all of your effort into the material and you're not continue to have everything move around on you. Only took me 20 minutes to remember that. Yeah. 